Welcome back to Forum 360. Today we're talking about the Lincoln assassination and what you don't know or thought you did know that just may not be true. Um, we have two guests that are experts on the topic, Mel Maurer and John Fazio. Um, let me ask you just quickly, um, I, can't, I can't pass up the opportunity with two experts in the Gettysburg Address. Um, we know the Gettysburg Address is famous, but what do you think made him a great orator and why was a speech of 272 words so memorable? Precisely because it was short. You know that old joke about the guy from prison who says, I'm, I'm sorry that uh, yeah. my letter isn't shorter, but I didn't have the time. <laughs> okay, It's the yes. same idea. Yes. Uh, Edward Everett uh, spoke before him for two hours, and no one remembers a word he said. Uh, but Lincoln's speech was such a model of brevity and uh, clarity and simplicity and word choice, as all his speeches were, incidentally. He was a master. His prose was masterful. That, that for that reason, it became mm -hmm. a classic. And some people recognized it right away to their credit. Some didn't. Some criticized it. But a few, to their credit, said, this is going to be mandatory uh, reading for elementary, every elementary school kid in America from here on. They recognized its, uh, its beauty. You want to comment now, would on you that? say it's, his, it's the content that made him a great orator? Is what, please? The content that made him a great orator? Well, because uh, we don't have, we can't see him on YouTube. Lincoln, Lincoln deliberately changed, uh, uh, created his style based on uh, early day preachers. He was not a particularly religious man. He believed in God. I believe he believed in Christ, uh, but he would go to church to study them. Plus, uh, he, he estimated that he had about a, u a year of schooling overall. He said he went to school by the littles, a little here, a little there, a little someplace else. But due to his reading, he was reading great orations. He was reading great styles. He loved Shakespeare. And he, he trained himself to be like that. He, he had a high-pitched voice, which uh, may have sounded funny at first in a tall guy, but it carried further to the crowd. And he was a magnificent writer. Now, let me just ask you one more question before we get into the actual assassination. We hear about his humor and his style. Um, I heard Colin Powell the other night, and I would say that his humility and his humor um, made him very, a very popular speaker. Um, we think about Lincoln's humor and humility. Is that a, a, an accurate assessment it, of him? It is absolutely accurate. He, he had a wonderful sense of humor. He loved to laugh and to make other people laugh. Even when everyone else was somber, he said, come on, perk up, you guys. Listen to this one, you know. He constantly told stories, mm -hmm. anecdotes, jokes. He mm -hmm. was much more likely to read himself to sleep with uh, Artemis Ward and Petroleum B. Nasby than he was to read government reports. Mel, you come, and I know you know more. He would, uh, he would inject uh, humor into his cabinet meeting. He would come in and read from these people. Oh, you got to hear this, what I read last night. He, he would wake up his two secretaries who's, who slept in a room across from Lincoln's office, which is now the uh, Lincoln bedroom, and wake them up and read to them at night. Uh, he had so many lines. He, he loved to make fun of his appearance. He, one of his lines was, uh, uh, I overheard Mary when we were dating saying that I wasn't much to look at, but that one day I would be president. And she was right on both assertions. <laughs> he, he said, uh, an opponent of mine said that I abuse the privilege of being ugly and, <laughs> and on his height. He said, yes, I am a tall man. He said, but that always helped. He said, I always told them that they could not deny that I was a man they could look up to. He, he